Hello, hello, welcome back to New York Talk, episode 142. I'm your host, Elise DeLucci. How are you doing? Fact of the day, George Washington, hear me out. Okay, he was president from 1789 to 1797, our first president. We like to think that presidents know everything. You know what GW didn't know about? Dinosaurs. Yeah, this is the thing. You know why? Because uh, paleontologists discovered dinosaurs in 1677. Well, they discovered like some bone and they didn't know what it was. Wait, you're going to die. They thought the bone that they discovered was from some giant reptile or wait, a prehistoric, ginormous human being. That's what George Washington thought when they discovered this dinosaur bone. It wasn't until after he was president, after he was six feet under, did they find other bones. And it was around, I think in 1820, I read, that they found, uh, maybe it was like a brontosaurus or something, but basically they came up with the word dinosaur in 1840. So George Washington, when he was roaming the earth, when he was president, our first president of the country, he had no idea what dinosaurs were. Isn't that kind of unreal? That was like somebody mentioned something about Picasso when he died. Like Picasso died, I think it was like like 1950, like something crazy. And I said, Did, didn't Picasso live in like the 1600s? And they were like, no. There were just some things that I... I a mind blowing. And this is one of them. This is one of the the first few founding fathers of this country had no idea about dinosaurs. Anyway, moving on. This has nothing to do with New York talk or my life. It was really came from one of those four AM rabbit holes on Instagram and I saw a meme and and it said this thing about uh the first president. And I was like, Oh my god, I have to share that. Anyway, I, I'm going to Florida next week, Disney. I don't, you know, here's the thing. I'm doing, you know why? It's an I and it's not an ah or a yay because I, one, don't like amusement parks. Two, can't stand the heat, okay? I can't stand the heat if I'm not near a body of water. Chris is like, I don't know why you say you don't like the summer. You're always looking to go to an island. You're always looking to relax. I'm like, there's a difference, right? There's a difference when you are sitting on a beautiful powdery sand beach in front of crystal clear turquoise water where some hot guy is bringing you a pina colada with the umbrella versus pounding a pavement with giant sweaty characters probably holding autograph books and then you have to go flip upside down on some roller coaster like two very different things but you know the kids let me get my coffee the kids mm, are so excited so you know I am in turn excited for them <laughs> for me that's another thing I will say though I did buy uh the Mickey ears I bought them on Amazon I bought two packs of Mickey ears rhinestones you know with the bow the whole thing Seven ninety nine per pack the reason why I was out on Staten Island I had to go to wake Denise's grandmother passed away rest in peace grandma Ruth and they were telling me that the Disney ears at the park, they're like $30, $35 a pop. I was like, what? I was like, oh, pff, mommy will buy them and keep them in the pocketbook, you know? Also, Priscilla's going to be down in Disney the same time I'm going to be there, but she's going with her mother because that's what normal Italian families do, right? Maybe they're going to Disney and the mother, the grandparents will come along. Not Denise, my mother, but you know, whatever. So... Priscilla said to me, oh, when you get down to Disney, the first thing you should do is you should place an Instacart order. I said, okay, um, uh, any excuse to shop for food, it's fine by me. So we're staying at the Gl the Grand Floridian. Um, we, I'm going to do the Instacart order, and then I'm off to the races. I Sometimes, you know, when you do Instacart on a vacation, you wind up just wasting everything you bought. But I'm not wasting. I'm just going to get like – cereal and bagels and maybe some like bars and stuff for the kids and water and I'm gonna have them eat breakfast in the room you know unless we're doing a character breakfast I think I booked that one of the days but I'm not spending the money I'm not and so when I went to the wake the other day 
Priscilla, she was with her son Anthony at Petaluga. She, he, she takes him there for his birthday every year. So cute. I remember when she first had Anthony, her first baby. He was turning one. And she was like, oh, for Anthony's birthday, we're going to go to Luger's. I was like, what? <laughs> but anyway, it's their tradition. I think it's so adorable. So I met her at Peter Luger's, and she drove me to the wake on Staten Island. And we were talking, you know, all about Disney and the whole thing. And when she went, because she's one of these Disney fanatics, you know, she goes once a year or something. They had a restaurant, a food plan, you know, so you paid... I don't know what it was, 300 a day or something. And you got, you know, you did, you had all your meals. The restaurants were included, the whole thing. And now, you know, it's not like that. You Everything's a la carte post-COVID. So you could really just rack up some crazy bill. So she was saying to me, you know, you'll go out to eat and the chicken fingers and chicken fingers and fries for the kids will be $25, you know, and I'm just like, ugh. But I reminded her that, living in Manhattan, the prices. You know, I love this diner, Gracie Muse, on uh, 81st and 1st. I go there all the time. I'm there all the time, actually. If you go to Gracie Muse, you're probably going to see Elise DeLucci. That's all I'm saying. So, very, typical diner, old school diner. You know, during the day, in the morning, whatever. It's, it's families and then, you know, the geriatric crowd. And then, um, you know, and, and it gets busy. The regular food is good, which is why I like to go. You know how they, sometimes diners do like the dinner special? I, I don't get that. You know, I do the same thing all the time. Omelette, spinach pie. Anyway, anyway. I said to Pris, I said, Pris, Gracie Muse, the diner I love, they changed all their prices post-COVID. I said, now, when I want to take the kids, they get nuggets and fries or chicken fingers and fries and chocolate chip pancake. I said, the chocolate chip pancakes are twenty four ninety nine. Can you imagine the nuggets at the diner, the fingers? I have to say, I feel like fingers is classier than a nugget, don't you? Chicken fingers means that you're getting a nice, I think, juicy piece of white meat chicken. Maybe you're going to get those like curly fries or waffle fry with it. But a nugget sounds so like cute, small, not filling. Anyway, they changed the prices to the nuggets. I think the fingers, whatever they are. So, again, $25. I said, I don't even know how I afford to live because it's ridiculous. I said, so while the Disney prices are scary to me, they're not because it's, you know, it's the average everyday price here in the fabulous island of <sighs> Manhattan. But but I'm going to make the best of it. I ordered the fan, you know, the, the water bottle fans and the fan around your neck. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not walking around without a fan. I don't care, you know. And. Mm. my Chinese fan's not going to cut it. You know, the paper Chinese fans, I have a bunch of them. I love them. Which reminds me, I really got to go back down to Chinatown to pick up some more of those. Okay, so I'm reading in the paper the other day, Central Park, if you're here in New York City, they have now a vegan night market going on. Let me see. I think it's, yes, every Tuesday from 4 to 10 p.m., free to enter. It's like 20 vegan food vendors don't ask me where it is in the park. People will say, oh, where are you going in the park? Or, oh, you want to meet us in the park? Oh, we're at Sheep's Meadow. Oh, we're here. I'm like, what's the street that I could get in on where, you at, where you're at? Because I am not one of these people that have any knowledge or understanding of forest geography. Like, I, I wasn't raised like that. By the way, I did a video. I did a video that... Um, I was going to the Upper West Side, taking Elmo and the girls to the dog park and out to this restaurant. Oh, new place I found. Telio's Tavern. It's on uh, Columbus and 83rd. It's like a diner, but they changed the name to like a Greek place, you know, to Telio's. And food's delish. Prices are good. I got the, the chicken souvlaki platter. I think it was like $16, maybe it was 20 I don't really remember. But basically, I got, you know, you get, you got a really nice pita bread with the grilled chicken, nice chicken, not like nasty chunks, you know, fries and a Greek salad, all for 20 bucks. Now, listen, in New York, that's, that's a deal, you know, they give you a little bread on the table. It's a nice place. So anyway, we're going to the, the park and to tell you, it's fabulous. And I went to cut through you know walk. I was gonna walk we went to walk and like 
all I could tell you was when I started to walk through the park, I'm like, yeah, girls, mommy knows where to go. We're not going to walk on the, the to, on the reservoir, which like loops in on the Upper East, loops out. You know, it loops in up. You know, it's a, it's a loop, that reservoir. Top of the park, it's a loop. And it's, you know, you could get in on the Upper West, the, the Upper East, you know, Harlem, whatever. I'm like, we're going to go a different way. We're going to have a nature walk. Next thing I know, I'm walking for like a mile and a half. I come back out of the park exactly where I started. No knowledge of forest geography. <laughs> I don't... Oh, my God. Anyway, but Night Vegan Market, I think, is a is a cute idea. If the vendors are good. I like that it's free. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, take a swing by. Another thing they opened in the city, which I... Have you heard about the Barbie Cafe? I'm sure you have. So Malibu Barbie, you know, they she did a they do she, Barbara the doll. She opens up her cafe. So they open up a Barbie Cafe in Gramercy Park. Great, of course a fortune. You got to make the reservations online. You you choose what you eat by the way before you get there. You choose it online. You know it's like a pop up thing. Of course the dolls are dying to go. And of course when they saw the billboard, I said. Mommy's going to take you. Barbie Cafe, your two girl, little girls, this is amazing. Annie's birthday's coming up, of course. So we saw, we talked, we forgot. Then I said to them the other day, oh, girls, Mommy's going to make the reservation for the Barbie Cafe. And Vivian turns around, she's like, oh, Mommy, Daddy's girlfriend's actually going to take us. And I'm like, no, she's not. Like, no, she's not. Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Paul's girlfriend got tickets for them to go see Taylor Swift, which was very nice. Her friend of a friend of a friend has some hookups, so they got tickets. Great. Uh, my daughters were so excited to go to the concert, right? And we were listening to Taylor Swift songs, and we talked about what they were wearing, just the whole thing. I was upset not that they were going, not that they were going to have the best time, but because I wasn't going to be there. Because this was their first concert, and Mommy isn't going to be in attendance. Now, do I want to be the third wheel with the tooth and his girlfriend? Absolutely not. And if they had a ticket, am I going to go? No. But it wasn't even talked about with me, you know? I can't afford Taylor Swift concert tickets. They were like $3,000 each, something insane. So if Paul has a, a hookup, you know, to go, great, go, fine. But it didn't stop me from feeling like, ugh, that's like a first. You know, it's a first that I missed out on. And, you know, these are the, the things that you got to deal with when you are a co-parent or you're divorced that nobody talks about. I I, I have to tell you, if you're divorced or not, whatever, it is, even if you have children that are married or whatever, you're thinking, like, you need to – play out all these scenarios I you know I got divorced when I was in the midst of a, a, a nervous breakdown I probably shouldn't have gotten divorced I mean you know I, I you know I had my father die and I lost my job and I was had complete work burnout you know and had the kids the two kids within 17 months and I was renovating an apartment I mean like it was so and you thought that that was and I had this company that was like blackballing me from like the exchange and sh I like I can't and then did you think that that was the time that I was like, you know what, actually, I'm going to uh, not have a husband. Like, I wasn't even working when I got divorced. Like, I literally had a breakdown. I'm not saying that we didn't argue and we didn't have problems because we did. We had problems. That every Marriage is hard. You got to work at it. But it, it wasn't, it probably wasn't the right thing or the right time, right? And uh, when I was going through those motions, you know, of course, my friends, my girlfriend, Stephanie, Priscilla, Denise, they were all like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, are you sure this is the right time? Like, I, I, we know you've been arguing. We know sexy time isn't really all that there in, in existence. But really? I was just adamant. Yes, yes, yes. Stop. Let me know. It was like I was just shutting down. I honestly felt like I was dead inside. But what I wish and... What the hell did my girlfriends know? We're the same age. I wish somebody said to me, someone older, a friend, I don't know, dare I say my mother, but, you know, I can't count on her. Like, someone say, 
do you realize that as your girls get older and you do vacations or I don't know firsts skiing concerts you know maybe school plays you might not be there because maybe that'll be a time they're with daddy when maybe daddy has a new family and they'll be with the new family it's like a whole nobody helped me map out the scenarios that I needed to map out in my head to make a sane decision and um I have a friend who is having problems in her marriage and she's like we don't have sex and he's not romantic and he doesn't fulfill me physically and intimately but on a emotional level he's always there for me and on an intellectual level we just jive and everything works and it's seamless and she's like I can live without that physical part if I if that's the trade-off I have to make and I think that's smart because when I got divorced I was like what I feel at a time when I was like wasn't that long ago but like I was really kind of almost like at this like sexual peak you know and I was like couldn't even believe like how I felt so un uh, desired and I just it was it was like a catastrophe total catastrophe so what I'm saying is that <sighs> I was really upset when they went to Taylor Swift without me and then when the girls are talking about the Barbie cafe and they're gonna go with Kesha the girlfriend I'm just like she's Polish that's that's her name um I'm like, you're not going with her. I said, you're not going with her. You're mommy's daughters and you're going with mommy. I said, please, like, come on, really? Like I said, mommy said she's taking you to the Barbie cafe. That's what we're doing. And it's like, I always feel like I'm not operating fast enough and Paul beats me to the chase, which is hard by the way. You know, so Annie had to go to the eye doctor. Let me give you an example. Now, this doesn't have to do with the girlfriend. This just has to do with another first. Annie had to go to the eye doctor. It was Paul's week with the kids. So he's like, I'll take him to the doctor. Fine. Annalise comes back with, you know, like some prescription, very mild prescription for glasses. Because um, she's like, I'll touch uh, nearsighted, you know. She can't like see the board or whatever. And he said, the tooth says, you know, Elise, she needs glasses. I didn't pick them out with her. Why don't you go? You'll take her. This was like three weeks ago. I said, okay, okay. I had it written down in a million places. Make eyeglasses appointment. You know, she would go up, take them to offer eyeglasses, the whole thing. My eyeglasses are broken, so I wanted to get them fit. You know, whatever. Life, as it does, just gets to us. And I got busy, you know, and it's the end of the school year for the kids. And next thing I know, he texts me. And he's like, you know, because the kids were with him another weekend. And he, another week, and he's like, you know what? I actually took it for glasses. You never made an appointment, so I did it, and I picked out the glasses. And I said, I wanted to pick out her first pair of eyeglasses with her. Like, I am the mom. Like, and I, you're an amazing father, and you do so much. And I am not complaining. I'm like, but can you give me some firsts, please? You know? He also took them with the girlfriend, you know, to the Cayman Islands. Another first that I didn't have with them. And I really feel like, it's very hurtful but at the end of the day if I take my emotions out of it and I take my feelings out of it it's like I could see the bigger picture these two girls have such loving parents and we want to do everything with them and they have even though it's nothing nothing will ever be like their two parents being together and married and living together they have two parents that are just dying to do everything and give them all these experiences. And that's so nice and important in the whole thing. So it's like, selfishly, I want to be there for some of the first. I'm not. But I don't, but I'm not like resentful towards Paul. I'm just like, to be honest, there's like this little immature side of me that's like, you know what? <laughs> it's the girlfriend. Everything's the girlfriend's fault. Well, of course it is. You know, I never met her yet, by the way. I know they've been together three years. I don't want to meet her. Like, I get it. She's a nice. She's nice. Uh, uh, she's nice. Uh. You know, it's like, she's nice to the kids. She loves him. He loves her. I don't want to meet her. Like, 
I don't want to meet her. Probably because, like, I still love him. I'm always going to love him. You know, remember we talked about the Pamela Anderson documentary? Like, she was divorced from Tommy Lee, who, you know, I thought was, like, kind of a jerk, but whatever. And she dated all these other guys. She was married to these other guys. And after, like, five marriages, she turns around and she's like, you know what, I can't love anybody like I love Tommy Lee, father of my children. I get it. I get it. That's not to say that I don't love Chris. I just love the two, too. I love everybody. What could I say? <laughs> you know what? why I'm feeling the love? It's probably because I started taking magic mushrooms. I know, you're dying. You're dying. Here's the thing. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I was having a difficult time a few weeks ago with the situation. You know the situation. The situation was the losing the Vic job and don't even get me started on that girl, okay? I can't. In fact, I'm probably gonna have to get some like digital restraining order against her because she's stalking me and I, I don't know. I'm gonna talk to some people. So if she's listening to this, I'm not even going to comment. She's stalking me. That's what she's stalking me. She's a single white female. She's probably listening to every episode. Anyway, so, okay. So I'm going through this thing, and I was just feeling, you know, like I was probably getting my period, you know, so just overwhelmed, up, 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 up. And I, uh, I, I tell the tooth, and the tooth is like, and he, by the way, he doesn't really want to listen to me. Like when I, if I text him, he's like, stop texting me your problems. Stop texting me for advice. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not. I'm like, I just like, I feel like, he was very good at, at, he's very good at, like, knowing me. He, we, we were together for almost 20 years. Like, he's very good at understanding, you know, emotionally where I'm at. And he, he he's worked on himself. Thank you for doing that after we got divorced, you asshole. It's like you, you he worked on himself emotionally. So now he has, like, the, the verbal tools, right, to communicate. Anyway, so I said I was going through a hard time. I told him what it was. And he said, look. Why don't you let me give you some microdosing magic mushrooms? I said, cool. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a woman of integrity. I'm not going to be in my house at night doing psychedelics, okay? But microdosing is you're taking the smallest amount. Elmo, what's the matter, baby? It's, uh, it's like 50 milligrams is one gummy, which is a very low, de it's, it's like it's a dusting. It's not even a dusting. It's like, it's not even a pinch. It's like a fairy dust sprinkle, okay? And I said yes. I said yes. So he brought me some of the mushroom gummies in a tin. He buys them when he goes to Colorado. And you take a couple and it just, let me tell you what the effects are. Psilocybin is what we're talking about. Psilocybin is the hallucinogenic or psychedelic. It's not It's not actually hallucinogenic. It's like, uh, uh, rewind. It's not, it's not hallucinogenic. The psychedelic uh, um, element in mushrooms. It's, um, it just makes your world 10% brighter. You don't feel high. You don't feel trippy. You're not like you don't have like graffiti jumping out at you, you know, from the side of a building, which, by the way, happened to me in Amsterdam when I went because my girlfriend, Kelly Fergali, gave me mushrooms. But on second thought, it, Kelly, come on. I don't even think you gave me mushrooms. Let me tell you this story, actually. I got to do a time. We'll go back to the microdosing. Kelly and I decide 20 years ago, more than 20. Yeah, you know, was it 20? Kelly, was it 20 years? She's going she's gonna to love that I'm selling this story right now. I love you. I miss you, Kelly Fergale. Fergale, by the way, means Italian for strawberry. Miss you. I had a roommate when I lived in Rome. I had five American roommates in my apartment with me. And then downstairs, there was another five or six American girls. And it, we lived in Trastevere. And it was amazing. Whatever the time of our lives. I, it was study abroad. We went to American University in Rome. And Kelly, well, let me say, the school would give us off every Friday so we were able to travel. And we went somewhere at, well, every weekend. We backpacked through Western Europe, right? And one weekend, it, we found out in Amsterdam it was going to be Cannabis Cup, which is the international weed festival of the world. So Kelly's like, you want to go? And I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> YOLO. And so we get the backpacks on. 
we train it or fly, I don't know, whatever we did, got to Amsterdam. And we get to this place called the Milky Way, which is, I think, they pronounce like the Milk War or something. And it was this huge venue, like the Madison Square Garden equivalent. And it's it's all of these vendors. And, you know, it's like a convention, a weed convention. Everybody's vendors. People are walking around with crowns of thorns, with marijuana. You know, it was nuts. Everybody was nuts. And we had a good time. And so when we go out of the convention, you know, we take a little break. She had something in her hand. And, you know, I have a crippling food addiction. This is no surprise to anybody. I, I have a compulsive eating problem. So she's like, I, oh, I have something for you. And I'm like, what is it? And she's like, raisinets, your favorite. And I was like, okay. And she hands me these, like, little brown things. And I, it may not think it. I pop them in my mouth. Okay? Pop them in the mouth. They taste like shit. That's all I'm going to say. One hour later, I'm walking down the red light district in Amsterdam. Oh, God, that was Elmo. Elmo, baby, don't do that. I'm walking by the red light, in the red light district in Amsterdam. There was a garage door, a metal garage door pulled down, and on it was a dragon spray painted. And the dragon came off the garage door. Nuts. I was, I was, I was, I was tripping out and started chasing me down the street. We go to the red light district, all the hookers in the window. I, I, I felt like they all looked like little dancing Barbie dolls. The, the bells on the bike in Amsterdam was like, ting, ting, ting. Everything was amplified and crazy. We wound up going to a sex show. It, it, there was bananas going in orifices that shouldn't be there. The whole thing, I don't, I, it was literally like the hangover movie, but we were in Amsterdam and we were some East Coast Italian American girls and it was effing wild. Kelly, I'm still telling that story all these years later. I love you and I miss you. And she's crazy. I love Kelly. She's also an artist. She's like a musician. She's into like permaculture. And anyway, I don't think Kelly gave me mushrooms then. She said they were mushrooms. Kelly, I think he gave me LSD because a dragon coming off the side of, not even LSD, I think he gave me acid. I think they were acid laced mushrooms because Graffiti dragons don't come alive and start chasing you down the street like it's the middle of the Chinese New Year parade. It doesn't happen, just <laughs> unless you're on acid, right? So mushrooms, microdosing mushrooms doesn't have that effect. Microdosing is you take this little sketch of an amount of psilocybin and it just makes you feel a little bit happier, a little bit calm. They call this effect like neuroplasticity look it up and there's this group in Colorado called moms on mushrooms and da 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 I gotta say the tooth came through with the microdosing. it is changing my life I did it a year ago he gave me some a year ago I tried it a couple times the problem is is when I did it a year ago I also decided to have some weed chocolate with it so I didn't even know what was going on in my life. But you're also talking to somebody, by the way. You're listening to somebody <laughs> talking. Of course we're not talking. I'm talking. You're li this is a one-way conversation, kind of like every relationship I have in my life. But the thing is with the weed chocolate was I emptied out the fridge. I gained 10,000 pounds, and I couldn't figure out was it the weed chocolate or was it the mushrooms. It's not the mushrooms. Mushrooms didn't make – doesn't – does, didn't then and doesn't now make me hungry. But you're talking to somebody or you're listening to somebody that didn't do, I don't, okay, here I'm back. This sounds crazy. I don't do drugs. I don't. When I was in high school and in college, I, I didn't touch anything. Like everybody was like blowing lines of coke. I mean, you read in my book, my first job, everybody's blowing lines off the toilet. I never did any of that. And still to this day, never did cocaine. No interest. Absolutely no interest. Um, I don't like these mind altering things. I don't like these crazy experiences. I had such an effing panic attack, Kelly. Like a, a scary panic attack nightmare for years with that shit that she gave, those raisinets that you gave me. But microdosing is ugh, life changing. So thanks to the tooth. And apparently they passed a law, or they're trying to pass some leg legislation. Uh, in New York that like in 2023, 2024, that psilocybin will become legal. I hope it does. And I know I mentioned this at one other time before, and I said how there was like NYU, New York University, there was like some research test group, and I was trying to get in it, and I, I couldn't. But 
Now I, now the tooth just flies to Colorado, gets a tin of the gummies, brings them to me. It's a lot of work but for him, but, you know, you know he likes to travel. Yeah, what do I care? It's good. It's good. Elmo is just at my feet, tearing up the New York Times. I didn't even get to read it. The Metropolitan section. And it's one of my favorites. Anyway. Oh, my God. So, I'm online and Villaroy and Bach. Remember that brand? It, some crazy pop-up shows. And it's French. What is it? French Garden Dinnerware. The, the pattern is called French Garden. I loved it. I fell in love with it. I didn't fall in love with like that. It was $50 a plate. Uh, it, it's like Frenchy. It's like a cream white, and it has fruits. You know, remember the um, the Corningware? Remember the Corningware? Like your mother had it, probably. It's the Corningware. My mom still has it. It has like the uh, artichokes and like squashes on it. It's it it's like that, but like more Frenchy, Provencal. It's vintage. I like anything with fruits on it, really. In fact. Product of the week later is I found these adorable vintage looking but new drinking glasses. I, I'll tell you that. Um, so when I was with Priscilla, she told me something that I didn't really know, which is with the kids and sports. Um, she told me in Staten Island, I don't think we have, but we must have it in Manhattan, but a lot of the kids, not only do the parents pay for their kids to do extracurricular activities, of course, their parents pay for coaches, you know, like private coaching. And I thought, oh, like a baseball coach, a basketball, normal. And she said, no, they're like specialized coaches, like a pitching coach, a catching coach, a throw. I was like, what? Isn't that like crazy? So intense. I, are we putting too much pressure on our kids? I, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I belong to some money groups and, um, there's a girl that listens to this. I think, well, there's a bunch of people that listen to this that ask me, you know, for that occasional money advice. And I, I gave it. But I, I think I'm starting to realize people don't want to hear that stuff from me. No, they don't. They don't give a shit about ETFs. It, and everybody wants to just have girl talk. And you know what? And that's actually what I prefer to talk about, to be honest. Girl talk, guy talk, family talk, food talk. Who, life, you know why? You know, Maria. Hi, Maria. I know you're listening. I waved. She's not watching. She's listening. She, she's, I just, she's one of the listeners. She's like one, my biggest fan. She said to me, I asked her ages ago, I said, I said, you know, Maria, I had this big Wall Street career. And people sometimes ask me for money advice. And do you think I should talk about that? Yeah, I was like, you know, I don't know. And she was like, yeah, if you want, like a little bit. But I think people just want to listen to you kind of like how they listened to Joan Hamburg and Arthur Schwartz. You know, remember Arthur Schwartz Food Talk on WOR? And, uh, you know, just like have non-pretentious regular conversation and I was like yeah you're right and and uh, I was on stage with Vic at some point I don't know and I think I did some Wall Street material and then people don't care about that they don't care nobody wants to talk. people go to the clubs Colin Quinn was telling me about like my, my money stuff and he's like oh you got to do it but people go to the clubs not be they don't want to be preached to they want to go and have a pina colada and relax, you know? Have one of those blue drinks, which, by the way, what the hell are the... Everywhere I go, nightclub, Soho house, vacation, everybody has these blue drinks. Bright blue, the most beautiful blue I've ever seen. I, I want to get that. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to like it. I just, I just want it. I want to try it. <laughs> anyway, but I'm in this money group. Uh-huh, long way of getting around to this money thing. And, uh... Someone said, which I thought was good advice, they said, it was a parent, a few parents, they chimed in, they said, you know, I, I budget on so many things, budget on food and dining out and da-da, you know, so you it's budget here and then you can pay for here on something else, whatever. But they said, a lot of them said, the one thing I don't budget on is my children's sports. I love when my children do sports, it teaches community, it, it keeps them focused, it it um it's teamwork it's 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 uh in sharing passions it's the whole thing whatever and the, and here i have it written down it's a no they call it a no limit spending category 
they said uh, the we here this one guy says the weekends of travel for sports are precious times you can enjoy it just as you would enjoy a family vacation or camping you know you could buy used sports gear if you're a parent you could volunteer with the team and all this stuff and so even if it's costing him two hundred and fifty dollars for a, a semester of baseball or football he wants to do it first of all of course i read this i was like where do you live that it's costing you two hundred and fifty dollars for baseball because is there a house for sale like really like, you know because i add an extra zero on that i feel like that welcome to like new york right i can't which by the way the grand floridian at disney was such a goddamn expensive hotel i got a deal like left over from covid but it's like the best apparently not the best it's like one of the fanciest hotels and I picked stuff. He's like, why did you stay at the Grand Floridian if you're always talking about being on a budget? I said, why? Because this is like our summer vacation. And I decided I wanted to like splash out and like really have a nice time. Because my boss, and he's right, said to me, who's texting me? Said to me, um, your vacations are only as nice as where you stay. And isn't that true? You'll go on a vacation. You'll go out for the day, the beach, or I'll be, oh at like magic kingdom you know with like sven and elsa and i'm exhausted and i'm all filled up on dole whip and shit like that and because that's like apparently the signature ice cream of disney i want to come back to my room and i want to luxuriate in a comfortable bed maybe get a little room service or instacart and I want to relax with, like, a comfortable robe on. I swear, Grand Floridian, you better have comfortable robes and a comfortable bed and decent pillows. I don't want to go to the Motel 8 and rough it because I got to wake up the next day and do it all again. <laughs> Mommy needs a little luxury too, you know? <sighs> Nothing wrong with the Motel 8, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've stayed in a lot of shitty hotels, of course, in my life. I want to just have a nice time. Stephanie stayed, what did she say, at the Polynesian. That, I think, is also super nice, the Polynesian. That's, like, I think the Moana Hotel or something. She went for, like, 10 days. At, you know how much she said she spent $10,000 on a hotel? I'm like, that's nice. That's, like, 10% of a house down payment. What? Really? That's insane. I'm dying right now. Oh, my God, I started watching a new show. Barry, you got to watch it. It's on... I don't even know what channel it's on. Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Barry with Bill Hader. Oh, my God. So someone told me about it. They got to watch Barry. I said, what is it about? They said it's about a killer, like a hitman. That's his job. And he wants to be an actor. Or he's like an aspiring actor. And I thought when I heard it, I was like, oh, that sounds like kind of maybe dumb. I don't know. I was like, I don't know. It just didn't like strike me. Because I felt like it was going to be violent and like like hokey. like weird. It's so good. It is so good. I am on season three. There's like six seasons, which I love because I get like a full, a full on, like few weeks or a month long binge on one show. Gotta check out Barry. There is this character named Hank in the show and he plays this gay, like mob boss, Russian, tattooed into fashion, very expressive guy. It is, he's like the best character. I just just love just love um okay product of the week gotta tell you you know the brand libby you remember libby i feel like it's an old school brand they do drinking glasses libby you can find like the box of glasses like box of 12 at like home goods or whatever again another crazy pop-up it's uh on amazon libby type in vintage juice glasses 34 dollars a set of four they are these tall thin glasses and they have like one has limes one has lemons one has and they're so cute i thought it was such a cute host gift if you're going to somebody for like a summer barbecue or if you have a lot of space in your kitchen and you want to have a nice like collection of glasses like that, that were like fun and funky i almost bought them and then i was like what am i doing i my apartment's like a thousand square feet what why, why i don't need like if I want to say stay sane, which I do, I need to have uniform glasses. I can't open up and have, you know, glasses from Libby and Fish's Eddie and Dutch Wonderland and Juice Jaw glass. Like, I can't do that. Remember, like, not Juice Jaw. Remember the Jelly Jaws, like, back in the day? And, like, 
I, I they were like had like animals on them. Some parents would like save them and put juice in them for their kids. I don't know. I can't deal with mismatched glasses. It's it's too much. Anyway, I feel like everything I wanted to talk about, I didn't talk about, it. and here we are, forty minutes later. This is what happens when I go uh, uh, too many days without doing the podcast. Here's um my quote, and I think it's just wonderful by Robin Williams, who oh my god, just the, the come on. Come on, if you never watched Robin Williams, you want to laugh? You want to laugh? It's like, do you want to laugh? Like, you know, jelly, how funny was Jelly and analyze this? Or no, was it De Niro? He says, you talking to me? I, I, no, that's Taxi. This is how you know I'm, I'm go crazy. Anyway. <laughs> no, it reminds me of the scene, I think, in Analyze This when Billy Crystal and Jelly, Billy Crystal's trying to do, like, the Italian vernacular, and he's like, you talking to me? You talk I watched the movie recently. Oh, it's such a good movie. Anyway, if you want to watch something good, YouTube, Robin Williams and the Actors Studio. He gets interviewed for the Actors Studio, and he does, like, a crazy amount of characters in, like, under a minute. And it's mind-blowing, <clears throat> and you're like, oh, my God, this guy's a total effing genius. Okay, quote of the day. I used to think that the worst thing in life was to end up alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people who make you feel alone. And that's it for today's New York Talk. I'm your host, Elise DeLucci. Love to love you, baby. <laughs>